I've been working out here in our pasture. I have the trees I just got from Burnt Ridge Nursery over in Washington, Western Washington. And I have the trees, some of the trees that I got at Cascade Farm. And I have started planting my food forest. Now, I don't like to have a set plan of where things go. This tree here, this bush right next to it. I'm a lot more uh, natural thinking when it comes to planting. I like to just pick a spot and if it's not too close and gonna crowd out other plants, that's where I'll put it. So that's kind of the idea of my food forest is it's more of a natural, um, like walking through a forest type thing. You've just got paths here and there so that you're able to access all of the plants. But I have planted my first tree. I already planted my blueberries and I've planted the hazelnut bushes that I got for free. But as far as my first real fruit tree, I have planted it. And it is off screen for you right here. Let me show you. <laughs> right here. This is the yellow Lodi, my absolute favorite apple tree. So this was of course the very first one. Side on, stop chewing the blueberry bush. Stop it. I have planted this uh, really close to the house where the chicken coop is right behind you. The garden space is right over here and the house is right over there across the creek. And I have a bug on my face. Because it's my favorite apple tree, I wanted it really close by so I can come out. It's a really early apple producer too and so you know I can see when that more easily when it's closer to the house when the you know blossoms are blooming when the apples are forming and when they're going to be ready to eat. So this is going to be kind of the the earlier part of production right here. So I also have planted so far the Gravenstein tree and the King tree. One of them I planted over here by the hazelnut and then one of them out farther uh, beyond where the fence was out over there. And then I planted a I think that's an apricot tree right out there. So I have four trees down and I have about 30 more to go. <laughs> Woohoo! I don't think I'm gonna get them planted all today. Let's see what time it is. 3.50 right now, so that's uh, not gonna give me enough time to get these all planted today, but I'll come back on Sunday and get some more planted then. So anyway, that's what I'm doing this afternoon and I'll just kind of show you some of me picking places where to put trees and what tree to put where. <laughs> so here we So this was actually the scout apple tree, sorry, scout apricot tree that I've planted here. So now I have an apple tree there, an apple tree out there, an apricot tree here. So I'm going to pick in another type of couple trees to plant kind of in between the two or three trees. So I'll go pick what kind to do there. I think I might do a pear tree. my pear trees. So let's see. I'm gonna do the Bira de Danjo pear. Pera Danjo. I think I'll do a cherry tree over in there somewhere. So cherry tree right here. I'll do a rainier cherry.
do a peach now. My peaches are in the bucket. So I have the next three trees picked out, so I'm going to go dig holes for them now. So we have the Bure Danjo pear that I'm planting here. These bags are pretty nice when that they come in. Um, because the roots are generally just in this portion and then there's a ton of uh, sawdust in the bottom here. And you can use that for mixing in with the soil around your roots. Just gonna make sure all the roots are tucked down in, and then we start backfilling the hole. the smell of spring. The dirt, the grass. We have some neighbors mowing over there. I don't know if I'm just smelling that grass or our freshly cut pasture here, but it smells so good. <laughs> All right, before I pat the dirt down around it, I'm going to make sure it's straight so you don't end up with a cricket tree. Although I have to say, cricket trees can be really fun to, fun to climb. The cherry tree my grandparents has was at an angle, so it's really easy to just get up there. Let's see. I think that's good enough. We can put in a stake with the rope around it if I find it's leaning too much. All right, just gonna use the rest of this sawdust in here as mulch around the base. Just wanna make sure not to build up dirt around the trunk. Uh, it doesn't like to have dirt above where the, the crown of the roots is. 
So we do want the mulch around there for moisture and to withhold to hold down the weeds and stuff, but we just don't want it up around the trunk. Gonna go get the water. Give it a nice big soaking so the dirt settles in around the roots so there's no air pockets. to the next tree. Since the that tree is a bare root, I think it's a peach tree, I'm going to go do that one right now and save that one for last. So when I'm digging a hole, I try to look at the roots and make sure I can dig a hole big enough for them to mostly come out without being too crowded against the walls of the hole. Okay, I'm just going to check it real quick. Yeah, I could go a little bit wider. This has some really oblong roots all sticking out to the sides. Check it now. That's looking better. They get curled back some, but not too concerned about that. I just want the roots to be pointing down and not up like that. All right, now we'll backfill. You can see the level of the tree here. Might need to go a little bit lower because you can see the roots are coming out here and that's above the soil level. So I think I am going to go just a little bit deeper on that. That's better just below the cert, uh, soil level now. So that works. Make sure all the rootlings are down. All right, now we'll backfill. Now you don't actually want a lot of grass growing under your trees either. Um, some people might plant a nice orchard and then want to plant grass underneath everything. And that's not the best thing to do because the grass will soak up the water and the nutrients that are meant for the tree roots. Looks like we've got that filled in. We don't have it tapped down, tamped down yet. So I'm gonna mess with the tree a little bit, make sure it's straight. Looks like it needs to go that way a little. There we go. That looks good right there. All right, now I'm gonna go get some water to get that nice and wet. I don't know if you can see off in the distance, way over there. <laughs> Brendan, the two little boys have started a fire. We're gonna roast some marshmallows and make some s'mores tonight. Just celebrate the Sabbath coming in. So um, I'm gonna plant one more tree for you guys right here. This is a rainier cherry. And then after I'm done planting this one, I'm just gonna turn off the video and just really focus on planting rather than trying to take video of me planting. So one more tree with you guys and then later I'll show you the rest of the trees when they're planted. Alright, this is the 
Rainier Cherry. It's a semi-dwarf. I was trying to get as large of trees as I could. I prefer standard of them all. Um, but most of them you can get mostly semi-dwarf or dwarf size, which is okay, but I prefer a tree to be able to be big and grand and being all it can be. But in a forest too, it's nice to have trees of different heights. So if you have some standard, some dwarf, some semi-dwarf, then it works good enough. I just am of the philosophy that if I'm going to plant a tree, I want it to produce as much as possible for me. So why not it have it be as big as possible? <laughs> And there we have it, the beginnings of our food forest. So exciting. I'm gonna go finish planting all the trees now. We'll see you on Sunday when we get to planting even more of them because I know I'm not gonna get done today. So have a good weekend. And we wanna thank you for watching. And for those of you who are subscribed and who comment, you are so appreciated. We really enjoy um, the, all the comments that you make. So thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Bye.